Hello everyone, welcome to a new episode of what if Piccolo got his potential unlocked early. Previously, after getting his potential unlocked on Namek and defeating Frieza, Piccolo went on to defeat Majin Buu, while future Goten and Trunks decided to stay in the present to continue training and defeat their own version of Buu in the future. The God of Destruction Beerus woke up, having a premonition of a divine Namekian. It was obvious that that wasn't his full power, so Kami sacrificed himself and fused with Piccolo to push his power even further into his orange state. They also found out about the Super Saiyan God and plan on using it on Gohan in the future. Gohan and Piccolo discover that Planet Namek is a bloodbath. After healing Dende and getting his help to create a new set of Dragon Balls on Earth, they revive the Namekians as Murray leads Piccolo into a cave covered with ancient wall paintings from the Namekians. The like goal for this video is 4,000 likes, with the next part already up on Patreon. Anyways, let's begin with the story. Piccolo's heart was beating faster and faster than ever before. His breaths were heavy, and the room was spinning around as Murray led him further into the cave. It looked more like the Namekians perished, and new creatures appeared, including winged ones, which Piccolo couldn't shake the feeling that he recognized them. The final largest painting was one of a giant figure surrounded by everyone, including winged creatures. He was painted a different color from the rest, a dark orange color. Piccolo took steps back. For some reason, this painting, this cave, made him feel like never before. So Lord Slug was this legendary Namekian. Even standing in this cave, he felt himself tremble with power. Murray gulped, telling Piccolo that he is their only hope. Piccolo and Gohan returned to the lookout, with the Z Fighters training hard, led by Goku and Vegeta. But deep in space, Lord Slug conjured his next plan. He was still under the impression that all the Namekians were killed. He needed to determine which planet to conquer next. Earth seemed like a prime target, especially with the possibility of having more Dragon Balls there. But he knew Earth housed powerful warriors, and he needed to get used to this new power first. He would go off to spread darkness through the other planets before making his way to Earth. If Earth did have Dragon Balls, then the possibility of other Namekians having created Dragon Balls was open. He would try and find them. Anyways, this occurred right after he left Namek, so he had been traveling through space for a few weeks. In order to test his powers, he first arrived at Planet Zoom, a planet where the sky was dark, so he didn't have to worry about sunlight. The planet was decimated in a manner of minutes as Lord Slug claimed a new world as his own. Every planet he moved across was one step closer to true domination. He meditated within his ship, searching the galaxy for the presence of Namekians. He wanted to always keep an eye out for that spike in Namekian power he felt all those years ago. Though he didn't know him personally, he found out Piccolo's name when he read Murray's mind on Namek. He was sure he could take care of him now, but he wasn't an idiot. He knew Piccolo wasn't alone. While sensing the Namekian energy, however, he also found a very faint presence in a remote world. He hoped that this meant more Dragon Balls to use. Eternal Youth had always been his primary target, but with Piccolo's power rising even further, and Murray's comment that one day he will be defeated, Slug realized that being young didn't mean he couldn't be defeated. Immortality was now his true wish. On Earth, the Z Fighters continued to train in preparation, but as a couple of weeks passed by, Bulma received a message. Jacko, the Galactic Patrolman, tells her that they have found Slug's ship and they had been tracking their movements ever since she mentioned it to him. The ship has landed and it was time to move. His trajectory indicates that Earth is just a few stops away and the longer they wait, the more planets will fall. Jacko's ship was flying around above Slug's, which had just landed on a new planet. Slug made his way out of a small house and sensed Jacko's presence. Something was going on. Jacko told Bulma on the phone just what he was doing. He dragged an old Namekian out of a home and he was holding a tiny orange ball. Bulma yelled at Jacko to get out of there, but Slug nodded at his men. The being was covered and masked. But from his back, wings burst open as he flew to Jacko's ship and began slashing at it. He couldn't control the ship anymore and it came crashing down into the forest. He barely made it out alive as the creatures returned to Slug. Bulma felt a cold rush down her spine as she explained the situation to the Z Fighters. They needed to depart and if her suspicions were correct, then he was looking for the Dragon Balls. They will need the Dragon Radar. 
At the lookout, the Z Fighters were ready. It was strange. Despite knowing the androids for a few years, this would be the first time they got to fight together. Goku was excited to see just what Android 16 was made of. If he was built to kill them, then he must be crazy strong. 16 promised him that they'd fight once this was all over. Future Trunks and Future Goten stepped up. Their hearts dropped when they heard that Jacko was knocked out of the sky. They didn't expect to meet him in this timeline, but he was a dear friend in the future, and they were going to help him out. They had continued to train at the Kaioshin Realm and had learned the Kai Kai ability. Thus, they would teleport everyone to this new planet. The Kai Kai is much more precise than the instant transmission. So, with some pointers by Kibito, they were able to locate the planet. But Goten's heart began beating faster and faster. There was a truly evil key there. The team teleported to the planet, and already they could see the destruction and darkness that was spreading through the world. It was cold and desolate. Ruins littered the area. Some new, some old. They quickly found Slug's ship, but explosions went off in a nearby city. Quickly, Goku told Goten and Trunks to lead the human Z Fighters towards the city in order to defend it, while he and the others approached Slug. Goten and Trunks tried to argue. They wanted to help Jacko, but Goku told them that Slug was close to his location. It was too dangerous. Leave it to Gohan and Piccolo. Goten and Trunks focused, sensing Jacko's energy. He was okay for now and they reluctantly left with the human Z Fighters. Piccolo and the others descended to the fiery grassland. One of Slug's henchmen was breathing fire into the forest, attempting to burn it down. The winged monster was sent flying as Piccolo blasted him. Goku threw the dragon radar over to him, telling him to worry about Slug. Vegeta, Goku, and the androids were to take care of these men. The Saiyans powered up into Super Saiyan 2. The androids and the Saiyans were now surrounded by Commander Zeon, Angula, Wings, and Metamacha, each of them with their own strange techniques, which they would have to counter. Thankfully, they they weren't the ones to get the power up on Namek, so this wouldn't be nearly as hard as the battle Gohan and Piccolo were about to have. The two of them used the Dragon Radar. Following the Dragon Ball signal, there were two different ones, one moving quickly through the forest and another hidden deep within it. Angela yelled at Metamacha to warn Lord Slug of the incoming enemies, but a sniper shot hit the mark and stopped Metamacha dead in its tracks. From the top of the Namekian home stood a man with something that looked like an eye patch. Vegeta cursed. The androids were enough already, they didn't need it any more help. But Goku was impressed. Despite his power being lower than theirs, that shot was incredible. As they fought, Goku attempted to talk to this new mysterious fighter. He wasn't interested in small talk, but he did thank them for helping out in defending his planet. He couldn't have it fall to an alien race again. Goku was confused, but the man kept on watching the way Vegeta in particular fought, the glow of his power. They couldn't be Saiyans, could they? These henchmen were nothing Goku and Vegeta couldn't handle. Obviously, these are stronger than the ones in the movie. Their combined efforts deal well with their strange tactics. Their ally, being weaker than them, stumbles and falls during the battle, but Goku jumps before him and protects him from a blast by Metamacha and helps him back up. In the end, the Cerulean warrior Goku and the others fire a set of powerful blasts at the henchmen, which atomizes them. As they turn to face their ally, they find him pointing a sniper shot straight at their face. You're Saiyans, aren't you? Have you come to finish the job? Goku and Vegeta looked at him in confusion. Yes, they were Saiyans, but they were here to help. Granola was hearing none of it, and he blasted at them both. But the Saiyans disappeared and reappeared, holding his arms away. They needed an explanation. Meanwhile, Gohan and Piccolo finally caught up to the moving Dragon Ball. Instantly, they felt an incredible power surge from Lord Slug. He was carrying another older Namekian with him, but they were flying aimlessly. Clearly, Lord Slug didn't have the Dragon Radar he needed to find the Dragon Ball. They landed before for him. Slug smirked at Piccolo's sight as he tossed Munaito aside, who was caught by Gohan. I knew it was you when I sensed you all those years ago. A castaway just like me. You don't know the first thing about me, don't I? A monster on a different planet, a heart consumed by evil. With an army of demons at his disposal, I may not know your name, but we are more similar than you realize. My name is Piccolo and I'll show you what a true Namekian is capable of. So be it. Sorry, your pet will have to die too. In a moment that grossed out Gohan, Lord Slug took his Dragon Ball and placed it in his mouth, swallowing it. 
Slug went on to ask how they found him, but when Piccolo and Gohan refused to tell, Slug lifted his arm up and pulled Gohan towards him as if magic. In an instant, with just a touch, Slug found out how. A dragon radar. He tried to reach for it, but Gohan opened his eyes, his aura sparking in such a way that he was let go. Piccolo yelled at Gohan to take the Namekian away. As the battle began, telepathically, Slug told his man to go after him. To his surprise, his henchmen from Planet Slug had already been disposed of. It was time to bring out the big guns. Piccolo unlocked his potential and pushed Slug off. Slug roared. The trees around him having their leaves burnt off. As Slug's skin lightened, Piccolo could finally see his power reflected. He wasn't the only Namekian whose power was unleashed. In the forest ruins of Planet Serial, amidst the crumbling ancient structures, Slug radiates a fierce energy and lunges forward, fist clenched aiming a devastating punch to Piccolo, who dodges. Piccolo counters with a rapid fire set of punches, each strike precise and calculated, aiming for Slug's vital points. As Slug hammer fists this Piccolo down into one of the castle ruins, the good Namekian fired a blast at one of the ancient structures, causing the tower to fall on Slug. However, he burst out of the rubble, angrier and more determined. Meanwhile, Gohan flew through the already torched forest. He heard the sound of wings behind him. These weren't like the henchmen Goku and Vegeta were fighting. These were mutated Namekians. Corrupted by Slug's dark energy, the Namekian warriors Murray mentioned were kidnapped. Gohan didn't want to hurt them, especially as Munaito told Gohan that they weren't fully in control. But more blasts threatened to take him off of the air, and he had no option but to expand his aura and knock them to the ground. Monaito was perplexed. This power, it seemed familiar. Finally, Gohan reached Goku and Vegeta, who were in the middle of the heated confrontation against Granola. Goku didn't want to hurt him, but Vegeta had no problem and he kept telling the androids to stay out of this. The fight was interrupted when Gohan and Monaito yelled at them both to stop, telling him that these men were not their enemies. Even if they were Saiyans, they have just saved them. Gohan introduced himself. He was a Saiyan too. Granola couldn't accept this. Even if they were here to help, they killed his mother and all of his people all those years ago. That's when Monaito revealed something. Yes, the Saiyans did destroy their civilization, but one Saiyan in particular saved him. This was a complete paradigm shift for Granola. Monaito ran into his home, taking a box full of things before it was all burned down. He told Granola that he would explain everything once this was finished. They didn't have time. A temporary truce was in order. But from behind, they sensed something incredible. Lord Slug's power was multiplying, well above what Piccolo was at. They had to do something quickly. There, they found the other Z fighters, who were taking taking down other Lord Slug soldiers, but were now surrounded by more mutated Namekians. Vegeta had no qualms blasting them, but Gohan got in the way, tanking the attack. They needed to save them, not kill them, knock them out for now. Some of them were more powerful than the others. The kids had little trouble, but feared Slug's power increasing in the distance. The look in Gohan's eyes told them all they needed to know. It was time. Goten teleported back to Earth to quickly get little Goten and Trunks. They needed the extra Saiyans for the ritual. He returned, and they gathered in a circle. Meanwhile, the battle rages on in the forest ruins. Slug charges forward as Piccolo sidesteps at the last moment, redirecting Slug's momentum with a powerful demon flash. He sends Slug hurling into a chasm, and a moment of silence follows. Piccolo, exhausted and drained from the intense battle, believes that he had finally won. From the depths of the endless void, a blinding flash of light erupts. Lord Slug emerges, transformed. His body now radiates an ominous dark red glow low, and on his back, the symbol of the decaying Ajisa tree, a sign of a terrifying new power. Piccolo in disbelief recognizes this as the same energy he had briefly tapped into during his fight against Beerus. Lord Slug looks at his hands. Now this was true power. Slug attacks with ferocious speed and strength, each strike heavier than the last. Piccolo knew he needed this power more than ever before. Why couldn't he push himself to that limit? The forced absorption of those couple Namekian warriors meant Slug could kill Piccolo at any moment. Slug forced him to the side of a wall, striking him over and over again. Slug was torturing him. Piccolo began to remember the cave paintings and how Slug looked in them. All he could do 
now was leave his hopes to Gohan. Piccolo's eyes go blank as he thinks it's all over. Slug rises as he fires one final key ball at Piccolo. The righteous Namekian had little power left. He had to defeat Slug. Piccolo lowered one arm and braced himself for impact, but as he did, he felt someone hold his arm back up. Despite his battered state, his eyes slowly clear to see Gohan's flaring aura, but something else catches his eye. Slug had called forth reinforcements now that the rest of the Z fighters had arrived. To Piccolo's surprise, they too were Namekians, but their dark presence told him all he needed to know. They had been corrupted by Lord Slug, and now looked more like those birthed by King Piccolo than the Namekian warriors. The concept of Namekians being corrupted by dark energy isn't something new. In fact, this actually happens in Dragon Ball Online, where Namekians move to live close to where King Piccolo was sealed away, thus being corrupted by that dark energy. Slug, being a parallel to King Piccolo, is using this same concept. There was something within him that told him to save those Namekians. Maybe it was Nao or Kami, it didn't matter. Seeing his brothers like this, enslaved by his own kind, it surged within Piccolo. I can't carry your burden for you, Mr. Piccolo, but I can hold you up to keep fighting. We can't give up. Piccolo fell his breath taken away. As a bright light shone on his back, roots formed to show the Ajisa tree in full bloom as the key ball was pushed back. Not only that, it began to change color as if it was being purified. Slug managed to dodge out of the way just in time as the ball exploded in the sky with particles raining down on the forest below, giving it life once more. Piccolo looked at his hands and then at Gohan. They had been gifted with divine power. With this, they could win. Monaito looked at Piccolo with eyes widened. Those Dragon Balls were his. He'd obtain immortality and bring darkness upon the universe. Slug roared as the Namekians behind him swarmed the Z Fighters. Gohan and Piccolo's energy in battle against Lord Slug was a spectacle of raw power and refined technique. Despite his immense strength, Slug found himself outmaneuvered and outpaced. His attempts to retaliate were met with Gohan's swift dodges or intercepted by Piccolo's counters. Slug was still above them both individually, but together they were unstoppable. The hopes of the Namekians, the Saiyans, but above all, Earth and Planet Serial. Goku and Vegeta were visibly moved by the unfolding battle. It excited them to see someone stronger than themselves. For Goku, this was the culmination of everything Piccolo stood for. He wasn't just a weapon of revenge created by some demon king. He wasn't a lost child left on Earth. He was a proud martial artist who now had a chance to fight back against everything he was assigned at at birth. Both Gohan and Piccolo saw this years before, back when he still proclaimed himself to be evil. Now everyone else saw it too. Now Piccolo saw it. Piccolo then extended his arm, binding Slug's movements, opened his palm at point-blank range, exploding a blast. But Slug remained, as if his anger only made him stronger. He unleashed his fury as an aura of dark energy flared around him. He broke free from Piccolo's hold, generating a massive dark purple energy sphere, creating a shockwave that forced Piccolo and Gohan to fire their own blast. Instead, it exploded for both sides in the middle, but the Namekian appeared before Gohan, grappling him in a bear hug and crushing his ribs. Gohan began blinking in and out of Super Saiyan God, his new power quickly running out. Goku and Piccolo blasted at Slug, releasing the boy. He was far too hurt and out of the God form. The dark Namekians found new focus, with them swarming swarming Gohan and the boys. Any attempt from Piccolo and Goku to approach the swarm was met with powerful blasts by Slug. Slug knocked Piccolo to the ground and stomped on him, forcing his head up to watch as Gohan and the others were being attacked. This was their weakness, his desire to protect him. That would be his downfall. But Piccolo replied that Gohan didn't need his protection because Gohan was his hero. Gohan whispered Goten and Trunks' name, Goku, Chi Chi, Piccolo, as the power of the Super Saiyan God enveloped him again. Again, the aura was so intense that it knocked the Namekians away. Slug was surprised, but not as surprised as when he saw the knocked Namekians wake back up, confused and afraid. Had Gohan's and Piccolo's aura been changing the Namekians, even if momentarily? If Slug's dark power could change the Namekians, then surely a pure aura could do the same. Slug called back his forces. He was now going to force them to fuse with him, though many of them didn't listen to him anymore. But as he was about to fuse with the first one in sight, a shot rang out, hitting Lord Slug right in the eye, blinding him from the left side. Granola had hit his target. This allowed the Z Fighters to fire the Namekians and get them away. Slug needed a way out now. Thinking quickly, the Namekians
can begin to grow in size, Piccolo's eyes widened. His cave painting was coming true, the legendary Namekian. But Piccolo remained calm. He knew that him and Slug could have been in each other's places. In fact, he had been before at the World Tournament. Piccolo, thinking fast, grew in size as well. Together with Gohan, Piccolo began to battle once more. Slug ordered whatever few warriors he had left to steal the Dragon Radar and find the final Dragon Ball. Gohan threw the Dragon Radar at Goten and Trunks, telling them to find the Dragon Ball and get away. Quickly, they left, being pursued by the Namekians. You see yourself as a conqueror, but you're nothing more than a traitor to our people. You've forsaken the true path of a Namekian warrior for a quest of power and terror. But I stand as a Namekian with the heart of an Earthling. Slowly, more and more Namekians were touched by Piccolo's aura and his words. I am every nameless Namekian you slaughtered. I am Nail. I am Kami. And I am Piccolo. Piccolo threw a punch at Slug, as Slug protected himself with his left palm, but it wasn't enough. Meanwhile, Goten and Trunks found the final Dragon Ball. Coincidentally, Jacko had landed very close by it, and they picked him up on the way. But the Namekian warriors kept going after them, with the boys not realizing they were heading straight towards the battle again. This was Lord Slug's plan all along. He could use the Dragon Balls right then and there. But as the boys finally returned, Gohan looked down at them. They shouldn't have brought the Dragon Ball there. But then, he thought of something, yelling at them to throw him the Dragon Ball. And while Piccolo kept on trying to force Lord Slug down, Gohan launched the Dragon Ball into Lord Slug's mouth. Everyone was in shock. He just gave the Dragon Ball to the enemy. It was at that moment that Monaito realized something. Long ago, he had seen the legendary drawings that predated even the cave paintings on Namek. They were unfolding before his eyes. Lord Slug wasn't down just yet. Now he had the Dragon Balls, and if he could get away, then he could use them. He fired one last blast in an attempt to escape, but every single Namekian he had corrupted, manipulated, and mutated fired their blast at him, alongside Goten, Trunks, Goku, Vegeta, Granola, and the androids. Slug created a key shield around himself, trying to keep himself alive, but the sky above him, it reminded him of something, his last moments on Namek. Before he was taken to the Dark Planet, he whispered Piccolo's name, but as Slug kept trying to push Piccolo down to the ground, the righteous Namekian knew what he had to do, yelling out, Come out, eternal dragon, and grant me my wish! Lord Slug's eyes burst open with light, as the bright energy of the Cerulean dragon burst from his body and upwards. Lord Slug was decimated by the sheer energy, in combination with all the various blasts. The last thought in Lord Slug's mind was the meaning of the word Piccolo. Another world. The Cerulean dragon shone in the sky as Piccolo stood tall, right by Gohan's side, his aura flaring as if it was wings, just like the cave paintings. Piccolo fell to the ground alongside Gohan. Granola looked at them. Cereal had been saved by a Namekian and a Saiyan. He looked up to the dragon as he wished for planet Cereal to be returned to normal. Sparkles of life and Genki rained down upon the world, as the dark clouds finally fully disappeared, and the mutated Namekians carried Piccolo, thanking him for everything. Thus, Piccolo and the Z Fighters returned to planet Namek, walking proudly. Murray runs to welcome them, but he stops. He sees the Namekians around him, the warriors taken by Slug. They were changed, deformed. It was a terrifying sight, as the Namekians looked down in shame. Could they be welcomed back home? That's when a young boy Namekian ran up to one of them. Regardless of the wings, the spikes, he took his hand and smiled at him. It reminded Piccolo of Nail and Dende, and instantly, the rest of the Namekians welcomed them home. Celebrations began, and for the first time, Monaito was surrounded by his people. Granola looked at him. Piccolo walked into the cave, looking at it once more. He realized now that the legend it foretold wasn't about Lord Slug, it wasn't about the mutated Namekians, it was about Piccolo and Gohan. Gohan walked into the cave, asking Piccolo if he was ready to go. The Namekian turned to look at Gohan, as in front of the cave painting, Piccolo and Gohan smiled at each other. Not long after the defeat of Lord Slug, we find Piccolo, Gohan, Trunks, and Goten having just arrived in the future timeline. The kids originally thought they could take on Majin Buu alone, but Piccolo insisted on coming along. The team had teleported over to a desolate planet, what long ago used to be Planet Zune. There, they found the evil known as Majin Buu. Thanks to the kids' teleportation and Piccolo's keen key sensing, they were able to find Buu in this dark world. He had just gotten 
through eating the entire population. Bu continued to stare at Gohan. He looked familiar, and that Namekian, he was too. Gohan cursed under his breath. This was the first time laying eyes on Bu, his old friend from many, many years ago. It pained him when they had to defeat him, but now he sees that he was far too dangerous to be kept alive. Before he could gather his thoughts, however, Piccolo and Gohan burst their auras open, orange and blue. Their training with Whis was showing through. The orange form surprised Boo as he smirked. Finally, a worthy rival. That's when the kids realized that they really stood no chance against him after all. But Piccolo and Gohan, that was a different story. Gohan and Piccolo charged forward, launching a barrage of kicks and punches against Boo. The villain found himself on the defensive. Boo himself seemed to be against the idea of attacking Gohan. Surely, this was Piccolo's influence from within him. Trunks and Goten joined the fray, their combined efforts creating a spectacle of energy blasts. However, Majin Buu was not one to be underestimated. As the team landed a ginormous blast at Buu, a bright light appeared from behind his back. With a scream that tore through the silence of this world, he unleashed his full power, an orange aura exploding into an overwhelming force that sent shockwaves through the battlefield. On his back was the sign of the Ajiza tree. It looked made of chocolate. Piccolo realized what was going on. This form was similar to his own orange state. Goten and Trunks perked up, realizing that it wasn't just Piccolo that was absorbed, but Kami too. That must have been what gave him access to that state. They were sure glad that Piccolo and Gohan were there now. They had no idea Buu contained this much strength. The tide of battle seemed to turn as Buu launched a counter-offensive, his attacks fueled by raw power and malice. But as he was about to land a decisive blow on Piccolo, Gohan zoomed before him, arms spread wide. Buu hesitated for a split second. It was then that Piccolo, seizing the moment, devised a plan. He signaled to Trunks and Goten, who understood immediately. With precision, they launched a coordinated assault, their energy blasts designed not to harm Boot directly, but to corral him. The Namekian, his aura flaring brighter than ever, began to gather more strength. The orange energy coalesced into a sphere at the palm of his hands. Even though he was backed against the corner, Boo knew he had to escape, bursting forward through the boys and attempting to stop Piccolo. But Trunks and Goten's blast continued to follow him. Meanwhile, Piccolo grew in size. Now the key ball could be seen from the atmosphere. Gohan, Trunks, and Goten redoubled their efforts, combining their blasts to create a barrier that held Boo in place. Despite his furious attempts to break free, the energy holding him seemed unbreakable. Even when he expanded his aura to get rid of Goten and Trunks, Gohan's power was unwavering. With the mighty shout, Piccolo unleashed the giant ball of key, pressing it down against the monster. The villain's eyes widened in shock as he realized the inevitable. The orb struck with the force of a supernova. A large portion of the planet was crushed beneath the giant effort. Bits of it could be seen floating around the atmosphere. Boo got to look at Gohan one last time before being decimated, a smile that seemed oddly proud of the boy. When the light faded, there was nothing left of Majin Buu but the echoes of his defeat. They knew that their victory was not just for them but the countless lives saved from Boo's wrath. Goten and Trunks cried tears of joy as they were finally able to communicate to the Galactic Patrol that yes, Majin Buu was finally defeated. Piccolo and Gohan smiled at the boys, also having a tearful reunion with Bulma, who hadn't seen either of them in many, many years, and promised to visit the past one day. Peace had finally returned to the future timeline, and it was time for Gohan and Piccolo to return home. Trunks and Goten did eventually fly in Planet Serial, making sure to find Monaito first and explain everything. With his help, and after much convincing from Granola, they used the set of Dragon Balls to bring back Planet Earth. It would be a long time before they can fully rebuild this planet, but at the very least, they can bring refugees to it. But there were very little humans left, so Earth would become something like a melting pot for everyone in the universe that had been displaced by Majin Buu. Namekians, Yardrians, Saiyans, humans, they all came together in this blue marble. Thank you everyone for watching this new part of what if Piccolo got his potential unlocked early. I've always wanted to use Lord Slug in some sort of way and this was a fun way to do it. I also feel like it really completed Piccolo's arc. There's still a lot more to come as Gohan, Goku and Vegeta have their own paths. But Piccolo is the strongest after all. As always, a huge thank you to the channel supporters who get to watch videos like this early on Patreon. This video was edited by myself, Ragmane and Chris DS. If you're itching for more Dragon Ball then be sure to check out the full story of what if Trunks stayed in the past. See you guys there!